Welcome back, comrades. It's Brave here. And in today's video, we're diving into a highly requested tutorial on PS Housing. I've decided it's time to bring this exciting feature into the spotlight. PS Housing introduces a vibrant and interactive dimension to your server, allowing players not only to own properties, but also to personalize them to their heart's content. Whether it's creating the perfect home or setting up a unique space for gatherings, this feature enriches the player experience, making it more engaging and immersive. Let's explore how you can implement PS Housing on your server and unlock a new realm of possibilities for your community. The link for this script is available in the description below. Please note, this script requires two additional scripts as dependencies, so it's important to download all the necessary files to ensure everything runs smoothly. Also, make sure to download Oxlib. I haven't covered it in the video because it's a common script required by many other scripts and is essential for proper functionality. Once downloaded, unzip the folder and then copy and paste it into the server directory that best fits your configuration. The subsequent step requires a minor adjustment. Simply eliminate the word main from the folder name to guarantee a seamless setup process. First off, I'm going to import the SQL file from the PS housing package into my database. It's crucial to ensure that this file is correctly loaded into the database to establish the necessary tables and data structures for the housing system to function properly on your server. This step is foundational for integrating PS housing, as it sets up the backend support needed for property management, customization options, and more within your server's environment. Once you've successfully imported the SQL file into your database, the next step involves going through the GitHub readme and following the instructions step by step. So let's start with modifying server main.lua within the QB multi character slash server slash main directory. Upon opening the file, search for the event named load user data. You can simplify this process by copying the first line of code related to this event from GitHub and using it as a search query. Once you've located it, replace the entire section with the code provided on GitHub. The next change to make is directly below the one we just edited. Follow the same process. Copy the complete code segment from GitHub and paste it in, replacing the existing code. Now let's move on to the client side. I want to remind you that I'm using a reskinned version of multi character, so the code found on GitHub wasn't directly applicable in my case. If you find yourself in a similar situation, simply copy the necessary lines from GitHub. Just make sure to insert them above the NUI callback section. Those who are using the standard version can look for the specific segment in their files and directly replace it with the GitHub code. Now, let's proceed to edit QB spawn client main.lua. Open this designated file and refer to the code provided on GitHub. Follow the familiar process of searching for the relevant section, then copying and pasting to replace the existing code with what's provided on GitHub. The next code snippet you'll need to replace is also within the client file. So, continue your search within the same file and replace the found code with the new snippet from GitHub.
The third code snippet, again located in the same file, will require you to use the same method. Search for the specific section, copy the provided code from GitHub, and replace the existing one. In this step, ensure you cover the entire callback since it's a substantial block of code, and there's a chance you might miss the end if you're not thorough. Once these modifications are completed in the client file, it's time to move to QB spawn server main.lua. This step will be a straightforward copy and paste task. Simply replace the necessary sections with the updated code from GitHub. Next up, we'll integrate the housing script with QB Garage. This is a point where things can get a bit tricky, so pay close attention. The original QB Garage has been reworked and published as QB Garage V2, yet the name remains QB Garage. It's important to ensure you're working with the code snippet from V2. If you're still using the old garage system, I strongly recommend upgrading to benefit from the latest improvements and compatibility with the housing script. As we've done previously, start by copying the search term from the GitHub instructions for this integration. In this case, the term might be can deposit. Use this term to search within QB Garage Server main.lua. Once you locate the relevant section, proceed to replace it with the updated code snippet from the V2 documentation. Or the next step, we'll continue with modifications on the client side of QB Garage. Locate the search term provided in the GitHub instructions within the QB Garage client main.lua file. Once you've found the relevant event, copy the updated code snippet from GitHub and paste it directly underneath the event you've located. This completes the installation process on the scripting side. Now it's time to tidy up by removing the QB apartment and QB house scripts from your server. I've already removed QB house. So let's focus on QB Apartment. A practical way to do this is by opening your entire resource folder in Visual Studio Code, VS Code, and using the search function to find any instances of QB Apartment. Delete or remove all instances where you find it, ensuring that there are no remnants of the script that could cause conflicts. Repeat the same process for QB House. For the final step, let's ensure that all the scripts are correctly initialized in your server.cfg. First, open server.cfg and verify that oxlib is ensured at the beginning, followed by the scripts you've just downloaded. The correct order of these scripts is crucial for their smooth operation, and you can refer to the GitHub page for guidance on this sequence. Additionally, you'll need to incorporate a door creation step in server.cfg. Find the corresponding code snippet on GitHub and paste it into your server.cfg. This step is vital for integrating any custom doors or access points related to your new housing system. Next, it's important to review how your database is configured and make any necessary adjustments. This ensures that the housing system interacts correctly with your server's data storage and retrieval processes. Finally, we'll set up webhook logging. Navigate to small resource slash server slash log and insert the code snippet from GitHub here. Then create a webhook and enter its URL in the designated spot. Webhooks are a powerful tool for logging and monitoring server events in real time, offering valuable insights into how your new features are being used and any issues that may arise. Take a moment to review the config file closely. If there are any references that need to be changed from aux to QB, make those adjustments now. The config file offers a wide range of features that you can customize to fine tune the experience on your server. This includes enabling a log system for tracking interactions and transactions, allowing police raids on properties as part of gameplay dynamics, setting job titles and commission rates for job related activities deciding whether players require an apartment at the start of the game, among other options. 
It's important to note that any Discord URLs previously provided for UI interface images may no longer be available. As a result, you'll need to source these images yourself and update all the Discord URLs in the config file accordingly. I encourage you to upload the new images to my Discord channel, specifically in the script share channel designated for this purpose. This ensures that all the visual elements of your housing system are up to date and fully functional, enhancing the aesthetic and usability of the interface for your players. Towards the end of your customization process in the config file, you also have the option to adjust the prices for furniture, wardrobes, and storage solutions, aligning them with the economic balance of your server. This flexibility allows you to control the affordability and accessibility of these items for your players, adding another layer of strategy and management to the housing experience. Furthermore, you can specify the quantity of items players are allowed to use within their properties. Let's proceed with testing the script. Since I'm using this multi-character setup, those of you with a similar configuration can follow along with the installation without worry. By default, each player starts with an apartment in this system. From this point forward, you have the capability to add furniture to that apartment, enhancing personalization and immersion. If you encounter these errors in the console while testing or using the script, don't worry. Dive into my Discord and navigate to the script share thread to find the specific script you're working with. Within that thread, there will be a code snippet provided specifically to address and fix the error you're experiencing. Make sure to check out Zap Hosting, renowned as the top hosting provider for your server needs. They offer a wide variety of products that can be customized to suit your preferences. Don't forget to use my redeem code at checkout to receive a massive 20% discount. You can find the code in the video description. Additionally, there's more exciting news. If we surpass 100 members using Zap through our link, I will host a giveaway for a lifetime Zap server. This is a fantastic opportunity for our community, so make sure not to miss out. To begin adding furniture, simply open the radial menu and navigate to the furniture menu. This interface allows you to browse through available items, place them within your apartment to see how they fit, and make purchases based on your preferences. The process is designed to be intuitive, giving you complete freedom to design and decorate your space according to your tastes. This feature not only adds a significant layer of customization to the game, but also encourages players to invest in their virtual homes, making their in-game experience more personal and engaging. Now that you've added furniture to your apartment, you have the flexibility to move and rotate each piece to your liking, allowing for complete customization of your space. This feature adds a layer of personal touch, enabling you to arrange and design your apartment precisely how you envision it, down to the orientation of each item. Furthermore, the system is set up to automatically assign an apartment to you upon character creation. This default setting ensures that every new player has a place to call home right from the start. However, if you prefer a different approach, you have the option to disable this automatic assignment in the config file. This flexibility allows server administrators to tailor the housing experience to match the server's theme or gameplay style, providing either an immediate home for new characters or letting them explore and acquire their housing through gameplay. It's time to introduce a new dimension to your server with a whitelist job, the real estate mafia. This innovative role transforms the dynamic of how properties are handled on your server, turning houses into sellable estates and adding a layer of strategic gameplay. Let's dive into making this exciting concept a reality. The first step is to ensure that the job real estate is created and properly configured on your server. This job will enable players to act as real estate agents, handling the buying, selling, and management of properties within the game. Ensure that the tablet item is available in your game. This item is crucial as it acts as the gateway for real estate agents to access the real estate management interface. Players assigned to the real estate job will use the tablet to perform their duties. When a player uses the tablet, it should open up the interface for real estate agents. Through this interface, agents will have the power to add essential features to houses, such as creating a front door access point and setting up a garage system. 
This functionality allows for a more immersive and interactive property management experience. By introducing the Real Estate Mafia role and enabling players to manage properties in this manner, you're not just adding a new job to your server, you're creating an entire ecosystem where players can engage in the buying and selling of properties, invest in the market, and even work together to develop or refurbish estates. Once you've finished setting up the house, it's time to navigate to the main interface. From here, you can view the property details. Through this interface, you have the ability to enter the ID of a prospective buyer and send them a request to purchase the property. This streamlined process makes transactions smooth and efficient, allowing for seamless property management and sales within the game. Once a player has successfully purchased a property, it's time for the exciting housewarming phase. This is where players can truly make their new space their own by adding furniture and other decorations to achieve a grand and welcoming look. It's an opportunity for players to express their personal style and turn their property into a home. The fun doesn't stop there. The flexibility of the housing system extends to the ability to upgrade house shells according to the player's evolving needs. Whether they're looking to transform their space into an apartment, modern house, warehouse, or a fully furnished house, the system supports these changes. This dynamic feature allows for continuous engagement and customization, as players can redesign and repurpose their properties whenever they desire. This level of customization and flexibility enriches the gameplay experience, offering endless possibilities for players to explore and innovate within their virtual community. It's not just about owning a property. It's about creating a space that reflects the player's identity and aspirations within the game. Encountering an issue where I could deposit the car into the garage but couldn't spawn it back, I realized there might be a deeper problem, especially when attempts to open the garage menu resulted in server console errors related to the database. This is a complex issue that may require a closer look into how the database interactions are set up and potentially revising the script or database queries involved. If you happen to have insights or solutions on how to resolve this database issue, I highly encourage you to join my Discord community and share your findings in the script share thread. Collaborative troubleshooting can often lead to discovering effective solutions more quickly. I will also be diligently working to compile and upload any fixes for known errors to my Discord. Staying connected with my Discord community is crucial because it's not just a platform for support and solution sharing. Thrilled to announce that our Discord server, Coden, has surpassed 950 plus active members and is rapidly approaching the 1,000 member milestone. A heartfelt thank you to everyone. I encourage you to join our vibrant community of 5M developers, which offers numerous benefits. Our dedicated staff manage support tickets efficiently, and all my video content, complete with download links, is first released in our Discord, accompanied by a notification system. Additionally, members can share free original scripts for community use. We also feature dedicated channels for general discussions, QB Core, and ESX support. Our aim is to provide comprehensive, free support and assist everyone in the community. Join us today and make a difference. Much love from the Coden team.